Denis Sipilenko regarded one of the most iconic names in arm wrestling history. Except Devon Lerbeck, Denis probably the most popular name in the sport. Before Levan Saganashvili and after prime years of John Berzenk, Denis Sipilenko was the ruler of the arm wrestling. With his gigantic hands and arm, Denis was completely smash machine in those days. In today's video, we are going to talk Denis's unusual body structure. When somebody mentions his name, automatically his abnormally large and thick hands comes to our mind. But not just his hands, his overall body overly wide. I've always thought he is like this because of the excessive growth hormone usage. Because high dose of growth hormone not lengthen person bones, but thicken them. Growth hormone is directly effective for the thickening the bones. But couple days ago, I rewatched podcast of Derek from More Plates More Dates with Steve and Leo from Leo and Longevity, which posted two years ago. And Leo threw an idea into the pot. He said Dennis had genetic disorder called acromagaly. Dennis Siplenkov is, uh, you know, he's the strongest arm wrestler that ever lived in history. Uh, he's unbeatable. If he was still healthy, there would be nobody that could compete with him except potentially a gentleman named Levan Saganashvili, who's from Georgia. They call him the Georgian Hulk, who's recently, he's new. But most people believe nobody could compete with Denis Siplenkov. He used to be a strong man. He can't extend his arms fully. So his arm goes like till here. He's always been like that. It's not from arm wrestling. So he used to be a strong man. He was like that. He has some kind of genetic issue. It appears to be uh, acromegaly. I'm not entirely yeah. sure. Uh, he's looks like older. it, yeah. When yeah, you look at his hands, it's... No, it looks like acromegaly with someone that has had estradiol peak in their adolescence. So he can't grow taller, but he continues to grow wider, and you know, in those uh, kind of ways. Did we, did, are there any pictures of his family? I would wonder what his genetic background is. No, actually, not even on his Instagram. Because I tried to look for, like, you know, if there's, like, pictures of his mom, his dad, and you can kind of... You know, make it's a, like a small assessment of what his hereditary background is. And Acromagaly is a rare condition where the body produces too much growth hormone, causing body tissues and bones to grow more quickly. Over time, this leads to abnormally large hands and feet. And a wide range of other symptoms, acromagaly often causes the bones and cartilage to grow too much, making it painful to move. And when you look at Dennis, his elbow degree got narrower in very short period of time. Usually that happens among arm wrestlers because of years of years joint and tissue abuse. But in Dennis' situation, it probably happens so fast because this disorder. When you look at the examples people whom experience this disease, they are all the same. Giant thick hand and limb structure compared to regular human being. Either because of this disorder or some genetic problem or excessive usage of drugs, one thing is for certain, like Oleg Jo, Dennis's tendons and ligaments are much more thick and stronger compared to normal human. Yet in the podcast, another idea throat. So interestingly, you see this often in Ukraine where the Chernobyl disaster was. There's actually another arm wrestler who had like three or four fingers, but he had mm -hmm. double the forearm mass of any other guy. His name was Oleg, Oleg something. He got in a car accident a, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of these people with interesting bodies there. I don't know if it has to do some uh, to, to do with the Chernobyl disaster. Could be. I mean, we were all scared to death when that happened. Well, that's what my parents told me because I was in Holland and it happened in 86, right? These types of disorder or in Incidents are kind of normal to come across in those region because all the radiation from Chernobyl explosion Chernobyl disasters effects even seen in Europe and all over the neighbor countries of Ukraine for many decades in those years even in my country Turkey is Black Sea region affected extremely by the Chernobyl explosion Denis Seplenko lives and shown at the events under the Russia flag when he born in Ukraine's Kriverich region the distance between Kriverich and Chernobyl is approximately 500 kilometers. But this idea has one flaw. Denis Seplenko born in 1982, but Chernobyl explosion happened in 1986, which Denis was four years old already. The children whose family affected from the explosion were born with some disorders. Yet in that time period, Denis was toddler. It's low probability, but maybe the radiation spread could also trigger the situation which he has. Summary, Denis Seplenkov is unique human being, drug usage also plays huge role in this. But we can't neglect genetic advantages, or should I say his genetic disorder's contribution on his body structure. Yeah. So, so 
Dennis, um, you know, I have some mutual friends in common with him. And what I know of him is that he had been using, he uses growth hormone and insulin, which is uncommon in arm wrestling. Some of the heavyweight arm wrestlers use it, but most of the normal arm wrestlers don't. He's an unusual arm wrestler and being almost a bodybuilder in terms of his eating. Like he's very scheduled with his eating when he travels. Pretty lean also. He'll organize the day yeah. around his eating, napping. He'll force everyone else to nap and to eat at the same times as him. He uses growth hormone and insulin, which is unusual. The only other thing that I know about his use uh, is that he was a fan of Trenbolon. I heard this from someone uh, quite close to him after what happened to him recently, which I can tell you guys briefly about, which is uh, that he was a big fan of Trenbolon. And apparently he was using Trenbolon for many years straight. That's the, the and I've heard that for also from a world record holder in the sport. So that's one thing. And the interest, the unfortunate outcome of this is that a year and a half ago or so, maybe two years ago, uh, Dennis got in kidney failure. So he didn't specify what the disease was, but the rumor is that and it is certainly his kidneys. The rumor is that he was in kidney failure and had a kidney replacement and he's trying mm -hmm. to recover from that. And that's why he's still a little bit smaller.